Jack Barton there in Davos for us. Well, for reaction to Trump's speech at Davos, I spoke with Joel Rubin. He's president of the Washington Strategy Group and a former deputy assistant secretary of state. I began by asking for his reaction to President Trump's first 2018 appearance on the world stage. It seems a bit muted. It seems like the kind of speech that he was forced to make. A uh, teleprompter was there and occasionally an off-the-cuff off remark. But uh, President Trump really doesn't yet know where he stands on global international issues and on economic issues in particular. Uh, as uh, a Leader Schumer in the, in the Senate said, it, it was for him on the, the immigration debate like negotiating with Jell-O. And uh, we don't really know where the president's going to come out uh, after he leaves Davos, what he'll say to his base at a rally, how he'll tweet about meeting with the global elites that only a year ago he decried and, and, and was very antagonistic towards. And we've certainly seen a lot of analysts wondering whether we should listen to what he's saying versus the actual policies that end up being enacted. So to that point, though, a lot of them still have this issue with protectionism. How much of a concern is that at the moment for world leaders? Well, certainly the signal prior to Davos was one of protectionism with the tariffs uh, being announced by the United States against China. But uh, the president really seems to be disconnected in many ways from his bureaucracy and from his executive branch agencies. They are charting their own path be it at the Pentagon or the State Department and at USTR, the Trade Representative and the Commerce Department, there is not a synchronicity right now with the White House. So the White House may unleash tariffs and then the next day the Commerce Secretary says, well, we want trade deals and trade agreements, but we're not going to join in. The lack of clarity, the incoherence, that's what's most troubling from my perspective. Uh, we don't really know how we're going to chart a way forward with these other countries. And it's interesting because Trump said, quote, there's never been a better time to do business in America. But how true is that based on the extra scrutiny we're seeing from foreign investors, especially China? Well, it's, it's a pitch and it's an attempt to attract investment. But China last year at the World Economic Forum made a, a very strong pitch, too, about working with China as part of the global international financial system. Uh, I was at Davos about five years ago, and it, the people that come to Davos really are shaping the global economy. But they're not necessarily uh, designing rules and regulations at that meeting. It is about pitching. So in that way, President Trump went there, he pitched, but he's not leaving an impression of a clear vision for how we should engage. And so a lot of countries and companies are wondering how they should adjust their strategies to this America First agenda. What sort of position are they in right now? Well, it, there's a lot of holding pattern, a lot of questions, a, a lot of questions to Capitol Hill. People on Capitol Hill will come back and say, we're not quite sure where the administration is. And so the negotiations are very fluid. For foreign governments, foreign companies uh, coming in, looking for opportunities, they have to go deeper than just the federal government at this stage. They have to look at the state and local governments. They have to speak with partners here in the U.S. who understand how those regulatory environments work. That's where the next wave of investment should be coming. So then, given some of the uncertainty with the U.S. policies, in terms of perhaps shifting alliances then, because people obviously want certainty when it comes to investments, yes. does that then open up opportunities for other global partners to trade with each other and perhaps sideline the U.S. somewhat? Well, it's a concern. And certainly, the United States at this moment in time is the world's largest economy. It's the wealthiest economy, and per capita has a, a significant value uh, per individual consumer. So it's going to be a market of choice. That said, over time, as the U.S pulls away from international mechanisms that in many ways amplify our influence, it will decrease our market power over time. And that's a big concern here in Washington. And we do see some divergence on some of the major issues, whether it's globalization or even climate change. Yes. Um, how do you think that's going to affect their economic progress when you have other countries, as we saw, moving on with trade deals like the TPP? I think that's the biggest theme of this, is that the United States and President Trump can articulate that the world should do what he believes it should do, it doesn't have to, and it can move on. And the TPP is the perfect example. The 11 countries now uh, outside of the U.S. are getting together, and they're going to move on. They're going to engage with Japan, and uh, uh, Japan and China, that is, are going to engage, and, and South Korea. And, and so the U.S., uh, we don't want to be a bystander. We want to be shaping this world. We don't need to be catching up. Right now, President Trump is putting us in a position where we're trying to follow rather than lead.